Hello and welcome to another video by electricalpereview.com. In this episode, we're going to be covering an example on synchronous motors. Problem states, a, a three-phase synchronous motor is rated for 2,500 horsepower, 1,800 RPM, and has an operating voltage of 4,160 volts. If EO, the induced line-to-neutral voltage in the stator, is 2,100 volts when IX, the rotor excitation current, is 20 amps, Find the following if the synchronous reactance is 22 ohms and the torque angle between EO and E is 30 degrees. 1. EX. 2. Stator current. 3. This should be 3. Power factor. And 5, or 4 really, total active power. Okay, first things first, we're going to draw the single phase equivalent synchronous motor circuit diagram. That's going to look something like this. Okay, so here we have our plus supply voltage E minus. Up top here we have our synchronous reactance which is going to be X of S. Down below the voltage across the synchronous reactance is going to be plus EX minus. Right here we have our induced stator voltage EO. That's going to be plus from this node minus to this node. We have a stator current I. And over here in the rotor, we've got our VDC, this is our excitation voltage. We've got our IX, this is our excitation current. And I think last one, we've got phi, which of course is our flux created in our, in our rotor windings that induces the voltage in our stator windings. So first thing it asks is, we want to find EX, okay? EX is our voltage across our synchronous reactance, X of S. So let's go ahead and fill in the values on this diagram that we already know. So from the problem, X of S, our synchronous reactance, is 22 ohms. So that's this guy right here. And we know it's J because it's reactance. So J, 22 ohms. Okay. Next operating voltage of 4160 volts but wait this is a three phase machine and this is a single phase equivalent diagram so we really want to find our line to neutral operating voltage so that's going to give us E is going to equal to 4160 volts divided by the square root of 3 is going to give us 2402 volts and for reference we're going to assign this voltage at an angle of 0 so this guy right here, our stator supply voltage E is going to equal to 2,402 volts at a phase angle of zero. Okay, anything else we can find on here? Uh, let's see. <clears throat> the induced line to neutral voltage in the instator is 2,100 volts. That's this guy right here, EO. So we have a plus 2,100 volts minus when the excitation current is 20 amps. Of course, that's our IX. So we're going to have 2100 volts here in our stator when IX equals 20 amps. Okay, anything else? Uh, look at this. The torque angle between EO and E is 30 degrees. So that means that theta EO minus Oops, minus theta E is going to be 30 degrees. So we already know that we're going to be lagging. Okay, let's continue with the problem. First thing it wants us to find is EX, which is our voltage across our synchronous reactance. So let's see, how can we solve this? Well, hmm, that's a voltage. We know Ohm's law says V equals to IR. We could write that as EX equals stator current I times JX of S, or synchronous reactance, but we don't know I just yet. So how else can we solve this? Well, we know that our supply voltage here has to be the sum of our synchronous reactance voltage drop plus EO, right? Since this is positive to negative here, and then these two are positive to negative, positive to negative. So we could rewrite that as E equals EX plus EO. 
and we of course we're solving for ex so we're going to re rewrite this as ex equals e minus eo and don't forget these are all vectors or phasers whatever you want to call them so we're just drawing the hats here to show that they have both magnitude and angle so let's solve let's say ex equals our supply voltage e which we found down here right that's our line to neutral supply voltage so that's going to be 2402 volts at an angle of we said we set it to zero for reference minus eo which we know is 2100 volts from the problem so minus 2100 volts at an angle of what well we know that EO is going to lag E by 30 degrees. So we know our, our angle is going to be minus 30 degrees. This right here is also known as the torque angle. Okay, we're going to plug this into our calculator using complex mathematics. Remember, we cannot subtract in this form. We have to either convert both to rectangular and then convert them back to polar, or if our calculator can do it for us, some of them can, we can use that. But basically we subtract these two and we come up with EX is going to equal 1201 volts at an angle of 61.0 degrees. So that is our answer right here for E of X. So you have X here, our voltage across our synchronous reactants is going to be plus 1,201 volts at an angle of 61.0 degrees. Okay, next, moving right, or, right along, we're asked to find the stator current. Well, remember when we first tried to solve for EX using Ohm's law, but we couldn't because we didn't know our stator current? Well, we know our synchronous reactants, and we just found E of X. So we can rewrite our Ohm's law to solve for our stator current I. We can say stator current I, the vector, equals our E of X vector divided by J X of S. So we can say this is our I stator current equals 1,201 volts at an angle of 61.0 divided by synchronous reactance equals to J22 ohms. Same thing, this is complex math. We can plug it in our calculator and solve for our state of current I equals 54.60 amps, and I'm rounding, at an angle of negative 29 degrees. So that's gonna be our I right here. This I is going to equal 54.6 amps at an angle of negative 29 degrees. It's getting a little crowded on that diagram. Okay, moving on, we want to find our power factor. Well, how do we do this? We don't know our apparent power. How do we find power factor, right? How on earth do we find this? Well, let's see. Power factor question mark. Well, we know that power factor is going to be the cosine of the angle difference between our supply voltage and our supply current. Okay. Do we know these? Well, we know our supply voltage is E, right? And that has an angle of zero. We know our supply current, we can call it that, but really it's our stator current. We just found that to have an angle of negative 29. So zero minus 29, does that work? Sure it does. So we can say power factor is going to equal cosine minus negative times a negative is a positive. So cosine of positive 29 degrees. So we quick punch that into our calculator and we do the trig, come up with a power factor of 0 0.87. Now is this lagging or leading? This is going to be lagging. Why is that? Whoops. Why is this going to be lagging? Well, if we drew our phasor diagram right here, and we saw that our voltage, supply voltage here is 2402 at zero degrees. 
we'll say that's E right here. And our current is 54.6 amps at negative 29 degrees. So that puts our current down below here. And since this angle is negative, or since our current is trying to catch up to our voltage, our current is lagging our voltage, we know that this is in fact lagging. Okay, last but not least, total active power, which of course is P. How the heck do we find this guy now? I'm gonna move over here because we're getting a little cramped. So P, active power P, which of course is power in watts. Now remember, don't let this throw you off. We're looking for total active power. We're not looking for power per phase. And this of course is a three phase machine. So we're looking for our three phase P, right? So we can say that three phase power is gonna be the same as three times our single phase power. We can rewrite this as three times our voltage magnitude times our current magnitude times power factor. We just found power factor. We already found our current and the problem gave us a V. So we can plug this in as three phase power is gonna be three times our voltage. We're using our line to neutral values, 2,402. It's actually right below us right here. Times our current of 54.6 amps times our power factor of 0 0.87 and when we put this in our calculator we can solve for our three phase power equals 342 kilowatts now what if the power or I'm sorry what if the question asked for what's the power per phase well, we never would have used that three in the first place and we just would have solved for single phase power, which would have been just voltage magnitude times current magnitude times power factor, which of course would have been this number divided by three. Okay, we're gonna clean this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to draw out the phaser diagram for every value in this problem, just as a quick reca recap and hopefully to give a better understanding. So bear with me. Okay, how's that look? A little better? Hopefully you can see all this. If not, I'm gonna speak it out so it's clear. Uh, first thing I want to graph is the relationship between EO and E since the problem says torque angle between EO and E is 30 degrees. So we know that E has an angle of zero as reference and EO is negative 30. So we know EO is lagging E. So we'll say that this is E right here and that's a magnitude of 2402 volts, zero degrees. Next we have EO. Now the magnitude of EO is almost as big as E and it's lagging it by 30 degrees. So it's gonna look something like this. So we're gonna say that this is EO. I drew these almost the same size. I was trying to draw the magnitude a little smaller since this is 2100 and this is 2402. But the important thing is this angle right here is our torque angle and that is 30 degrees. So there's 30 degree difference between EO and E with EO lagging E. Next, let's look at the voltage across our synchronous reactance impedance right here, EX. EX is 1201 volts at an angle of 61.0 degrees. Well, 61 degrees is gonna put us somewhere in the realm of right here. And we're gonna draw the magnitude about half the size of E and EO since it's only 1201. So this phaser right here is gonna be our EX. And this angle right here from the zero axis to EX is gonna be 61.0 degrees. Next, I'm gonna use a different color for current just so it stands out, but we're gonna show our phaser for I. Now, I is only 54.6 amps, so the magnitude is gonna be teeny tiny compared to the magnitude of these three. But notice that the phase angle is negative 29 degrees. So it's almost gonna be laying right on the magnitude of EO, except it's gonna be just a little bit closer to the x-axis. It's gonna be one degree closer. So I'm gonna draw this as best as I can, but I would look something like this. Right there. And of course, the reason why I is so small, that magnitude, is because it's only 
54.6, where these guys are in the 2000s and this guy's in the 1000. And this angle right here, which you can't really show, but I'm just going to draw it like that. That angle is negative 29 degrees. And the angle between I and EO, that's only 1 degree. Since this is negative 29 and this is negative 30. Does that make sense? Okay, just to recap, important things on these kinds of problems, always, always, always draw your circuit, your equivalent circuit. It's going to really help you. Remember, EX is always going to be the voltage across your reactants, X of S. You can find it two different ways. You can use Ohm's law, which says V equals to IR, or you can sum the voltages to say E equals EX plus EO. Next, remember that EO, this is going to be the voltage from this point to here. It's actually being induced. That's our stator voltage induced by our flux from our rotor windings. Um, remember that the phase shift between EO and E is always going to be our torque. The bigger the phase shift, the more the torque. So if EO, the more it approaches this direction, the bigger the torque is going to be. Next, our supply voltage E. Remember that this is a single phase equivalent circuit. So if you're given the voltage three phase like we were here, don't forget, make sure you put that into single phase by dividing it by the square root of three. If not, when we're doing this right here, we're going to get the wrong values if we use the three phase voltage or the line to line voltage. And we'll touch on power factor like we talked about earlier. You'll notice here's I. It's kind of hard to see with all the phasers there, but this line right here, that's I. And that's our supply current E. I is lagging E, so therefore we know our power factor is lagging. Another quick way we could, we could tell this is because the only impedance we have on this side of the circuit, it's a positive J value. We know that when our impedance angle, we'll call it theta Z, when that's positive, we know we're going to get a lagging circuit. But if that was negative, we know we would have had a leading circuit. We also call this an inductive circuit for lagging or a capacitive circuit for leading. And that's just about it. Make sure you always draw your diagrams. And after that, it just becomes a very basic circuit analysis problem. And that's it for example on synchronous motors. For more PE exam practice problems and to try our online review course, come see us at electricalpereview.com. See you soon.